and it's about why we get out of bed in the morning. Rock and roll is about friendships, meeting new people, and sharing experiences. Rock and roll is why we are all here this evening. Rock and roll is why life is great. It's about all you people and all the bands here. Tonight, you're going to meet new friends. You're going to share experiences. It is with that passion that the tragically hit trouble with the head house tour welcomes you to Maple Leaf Gardens. And please welcome from Etobicoke. I think, the, I think the major reason why we play in the band is because um, we measure our success not generally by how much, how, how much great, better we get in our musical ability as much as how many friends we make when we go on little trips or play gigs and how we make people happy. And, and the main people that we make happy is ourselves. And when we're making ourselves happy playing music, we're generally making other people happy. And it's a hell of a lot better than making them cranky. The reason I like being in the re-estatics because you get to be on TV quite often. Whether it's going nationwide on much music, or even TSN, or maybe even being on Humber College TV and talking to you, it's nice to meet people through the medium of television. How do you do? Well, uh, playing in the Rio Statics is, is really good because the, these other three guys are really good musicians. Of course, I'm not. But uh, you can take a song and it becomes transformed and it saves a lot of work. <laughs> Next. Okay, my favorite thing about being in the Rio Statics is uh, playing with musicians with free minds. Musicians who are willing to try anything <laughs> and everything. Well, the thing I like best about being a real static is one, is uh, the people that I play with are all my friends and no matter how much we argue, um, we always forgive each other. Um, although we hold some, some great grudges, they always seem to be washed away when we get up on stage and play silly music. We take a lot of criticism from people, but we generally have quite a bit more fun than most bands and ignore it because we're always playing for a good time and, and we've always managed to get far ahead, slow going the slow route and not compromising ourselves by other people's ideas. Okay, no. One, two, three, four, no.
An interesting echo of Britain's so-called jazz revival is the music of the Rio Statics, who have just released one of Toronto's best independent cassettes ever. They've got an appealing sense of humor, and they're plugging the old jazzy sounds into a new socket. You can feel it when you're dancing. You can feel it on your feet. Ow! You can taste it when you're eating. What? All that artificial meat. Ah! When I sing songs like Chemical World, I, I pay attention to uh, the, the funny sounds I'm making with my voice. I, the, the words to me are, are just sounds that come out of, out of uh, vibrating vocal cords and, and have no content when I'm singing them. So I, that's my approach to it anyways. I just, I like making sounds with my, with my throat. My attention was first drawn to the rheostatics when you dropped by a little cassette tape that you've released. And I listened to it and I thought, this is great. But then you said, yes, but you've got to tape us live because that's where our real strengths lie. Now, why do you say that? Well, I think it's, it's probably the approach we take to, uh, you know, performing to a large group of people or even a small group of people. You know, every, no one's a stranger at a Rio Statics concert or something like that. Uh, a friend actually once asked a friend of mine how many people were in the Rio Statics, and she responded that there are 50, but only six of them play instruments. So basically what that means is, you What's know... the other 50 do? do? I'd, well, the other 50... Uh, tell jokes or something. Some kind of traveling circus. Say percussion. Well, the, I mean, the thing is, since, since there's a lot of movement on stage and, you know, we, we tend to uh, drift off and, and speak to the audience while our drummer's still playing a backbeat, you know, we, we don't like to take the attitude where, you know, we're, we're the performer, you're the audience, sit there, obey, do what, do what you want to do. It's, it's a very open type atmosphere and I think that works best, particularly with the type of music we play, which is, you know, has, has a base of a lot of fun to it. This music that you play is a kind of a hybrid of, of punk and disco or something like that. Uh, how did you work it out? So much of what we listened to when we were growing up was, was disco music. You know, it was unavoidable. It was <laughs> everywhere. And, uh, so one, what are we talking, 1975, 76? Something like uh, that, yeah. I mean, we do a version of Wild Cherries, play that funky music, White Point, which is, you know, I'm on, on record, is totally embarrassing. But if you add a bit I of like spot it, in there, <laughs> Tim likes it, but... You were speaking earlier about the whole jazz, jazz slash funk type revival. That's and happening in Britain. That's happening in Britain right now. And I mean, we've been doing it for quite a long time. We've only recently added the brass section because, I mean, we've tried keyboards in the past, but live horns, there's nothing like live horns. And choreography between the horns and the guitar player and, and real drums and stuff like that tends to work so much better. And, you know, it's funny because we always found us, we found as we were progressing, he was sort of running out of energy at the end. You know, the last couple of songs was like, <sighs> and and now with the addition of the horns, I can sit back and you know look at them and think, wow. <laughs> to wait for me, no thanks. Coming up on the new music, Murray McLaughlin.
Shut the 